Today's video is gonna be on an Anchor Solix F3800. All right, this thing, this thing is a beast. It weighs like 132 pounds or something like that. It's a powerhouse. It's pretty massive. That's what she said. All right, anyway, today's video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at this powerhouse right here, and this is the Anchor Solix F3800. All right, so how this video is probably gonna go, since I don't wanna waste too much of your time, is we're gonna take a closer look. I'm gonna go over all the specifications, and then we're going to test it out how it's intended to be used. How it's intended to be used is basically a battery backup system, or a whole home battery backup system. That's how we're gonna be testing it out today. We're going to simulate a blackout, power my entire house, and basically see how it handles. Can you actually use this as a whole home battery backup system? All right, enough of that, let's get to it. All right, so like I said, this is the Anchor Solix F3800. The 3800 is basically the battery size. It has 3.8 kilowatt hours or 3800 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. If you're not familiar with batteries these days, lithium iron phosphate is pretty much the safest battery that you can get. All right, so on the front, you got your standard 12 volt cigarette lighter port. You can turn that on and off with a push of a button. Next to that, you do have another button for your Bluetooth and your wireless connectivity. So there's a Bluetooth app. You can connect with Bluetooth or you can connect it through your Wi-Fi. On the display here, right now it's showing us 41% state of charge. So we are going to have to charge this up, of course before we start testing it out. Right below that, we have three USB-C ports and then two USB-A ports. Right over here, you got your display button to basically turn that on and off. And then we have your power button right there. And then on the top here, there's a nice pretty blue LED light. On the left-hand side, this is gonna be your charging and expansion side. So on the lower port right here, this is gonna be your battery expansion port. You can actually expand up to six more batteries for a total of 26.9 kilowatt hour. And on the top port, you can actually combine two of the F3800s for a total of 12,000 watt output. So basically if you use both ports and max everything out, you can get 12,000 watts worth of inverter and 53.8 kilowatt hour worth of storage. All right, besides that, you got your 120 volt AC input. This is where you're gonna charge it from the wall. And then you have two XT60 DC charging ports right here. And the input voltage on those is 11 to 32 volts at 10 amps. This is gonna be for your car chargers, you know, small chargers, stuff like that. And then you also have a 32 to 60 volt 25 amp. Basically, you can recharge at 2400 watts by using the two XT60 connections right here. But whenever you are recharging from solar panels, make sure you do not go over 60 volts open circuit. All right, on the right side, this is where all of your AC output is gonna be. And if I didn't mention it earlier, this has a 6,000 watt, 240 volt pure sine wave output inverter. I don't think anybody else makes that. I think these guys are the first ones to do 240 volts, which is amazing. You got all sorts of options right over here on the side. So up here on the top of your two 240 volt outlets right here, this one is a 50 amp style plug and this one is a 25 amp style plug. Right over here, you have six 120 20 amp outlets. The left side are gonna be your UPS side or your uninterruptible power supply side. And the right side are not UPS style. So if you're using the UPS function, you wanna be plugged into the left hand plugs right there. And if you wanna use all this, you gotta turn it on with that button right up there. On the back side, there's really not too much other than these two rubber bump stops. This is to allow you to lay the whole unit down so you can use it in the down position or store it in the down position. On the top side, there's really nothing much other than the two handles and then your easy tow handle right here. This is just like your luggage handle. You push the button and the telescopic handle comes right out. And on the bottom side, here's that hidden handle that I was talking about earlier. So if you need a second person to help you lift it, you can use this handle right here. It also comes with two locking casters, so once you lock this, it won't roll away from you. All right, that's enough of the overview. Let's see if it'll power my house. Bring it right over here and park it. 
All right, now that we're over here, we're gonna be hooking it up to my 50 amp generator plug right here. So of course, to do that, we're gonna need a 50 amp generator cord, which I have right here. So first thing to do, obviously, is to plug in your cable. Plug it in, and the other end, right into the 50 amp plug. Boom, and done. And of course, don't forget to turn on the AC ports right over here, and that is with this button right up here. All right, once we turn on the AC, you'll see it show up here right on the front. It says 60 hertz, and right up here on the top left, it'll show your remaining time in hours. All right, we'll shut off the main power to the house. We'll flip up the generator lockout switch, turn on the main breaker, boom, there we go. Now my entire house is being powered by the Anchor Solix F3800. All right, if we open up the app, you can see we're sitting at 100% state of charge. Our temperature is 77 degrees, if that matters to you. If we scroll down just a little bit to the AC output, it looks like my house is only drawing 456 watts at this current time. That's kind of like my house just resting. All right, typically what I do next is walk around the house and show you exactly what is being powered right now. And then after that, we're gonna start turning everything on in the house to see what this can handle. We got three more random LED lights up here, but they're a little harder to see because it's so dark back here. Of course, the beer fridge, which is a must. LED light right here. On the stairs, we've got three LED lights in there and one at the top of the stairs right there. Up here in the kitchen, we've got six LED lights across the ceiling right there. And then we've got two hanging ones. And then we got a little guy right there in the corner. And we got a little cat drinking fountain right there. And we have our refrigerator, of course. Next to the kitchen, we've got an LED light on right there, right there. In the hallway, we've got two LED lights on. We've got two battery powered cats right here. In the TV room, we've got an LED light on right there and right there. And then right underneath there, we've got our cable modem, router, and a little mini computer. And then one thing I always forget is the garage door opener is also being powered, which is pretty important. Time now is 11.01. We're currently sitting at 96% state of charge, and my house is drawing 581 watts. It's a little bit higher than before, maybe a refrigerator or something like that kicked on. Typically what I do next is make a simulated pot of coffee. What that means is I'm not gonna put new grounds or anything like that. I'm just gonna go over the old grounds. All right, here we go. 12 cups. All right, here we go. Now we're drawing 1,655 watts. All right, so that is the coffee pot and the rest of my house. Oh, you know what might've kicked on is my furnace fan. The heat, we have gas heat here, so the furnace fan might have kicked on. That could have been why we were drawing just a little bit more power. All right, anyway, 1800 watts. Let's see if we can make a full pot of coffee. All right, looks like we can make a full pot of coffee. We're down to 86% state of charge, and now my house again is only drawing 576 watts. Yum. All right, next thing we're gonna do is step back in time and see if it'll power my really old microwave because I made some little hammies for my lunch. And we're gonna do a total of one minute, maybe a little bit more. All right, so now we can do a microwave, no problem, and we're only drawing 1,500 watts. That is including the rest of my house. All right, lunch is served, and it looks like it can power a really old microwave for a little over a minute to heat up my ham sams, no problem. All right, it can obviously run all of those things just fine. What about a toaster? Yeah, it can run a toaster just fine. Now we're drawing 1,335 watts. What about the microwave also? Well, yes, yes it can. We're only drawing 2,280 watts. No problem. What about a vacuum cleaner? Even though you probably wouldn't vacuum in a power outage. No problem. All right, next thing I wanna try is the 10 inch sliding compound miter saw and a two horsepower air compressor. The 10 inch sliding compound miter saw is 120 volts, 60 hertz at 15 amps. And the air compressor is 115 volts, 14 amps, 
2 horsepower or 2.5 horsepower peak. And whenever I do the 10 inch sliding compound miter saw, I'm just going to be starting it up because there's a big inrush of current. I'm not going to be cutting any wood or anything like that because we're inside my house. And if we look at the screen real quick before we do it, we're sitting at 62% state of charge. My house is drawing 577 watts. Here we go. I'm not even sure what the inrush is because it just wasn't quick enough, but it does start the saw just fine. We'll do it one more time. All right, we did see a peak a little over 2000 watts. All right, we're gonna do the air compressor. Here we go. Oh, I gotta plug it in though. All right, we went up to 1800 watts. We'll try it one more time. 2500 watts. All right, it does each one of these individually just fine. All right, now what I think we'll do is both at the same time. Here we go. All right, I don't know if you saw exactly what happened there, but as soon as I turned on the saw, the air compressor kind of just stopped. And then once the saw was kind of up to speed, the air compressor finally kicked back on. So it did do it and everything else continued to run, but this one had a little bit of problem. So we'll try it one more time. All right, pretty much the same thing happened. Once I turned on the saw, air compressor kind of kicked off for, I don't know, two or three seconds, and then finally came back on. The rest of the house ran just fine, but you did see the lights dim just a little bit. All right, it ran all of that other stuff, no problem. We want to get to the big guns. Let's say you live in the south, and the power went out from maybe a hurricane. It's super hot out will it run your air conditioning? So here at my house, I have a four ton air conditioning. The startup can draw over a hundred amps. It's huge. It can just draw a ton of power. So I don't know if you guys follow my channel or watch any of my videos or anything like that. This is what I do. I mess with all these battery backup systems, generators, etc. And one of the hardest things to run off of a backup generator or a backup battery is your air conditioning. Just because whenever it starts up that huge inrush of current, generators have a huge problem running air conditioning as well as battery backups, just like this one right here. So since I've been messing with the whole battery backup and off-grid systems, I did install a soft start on my air conditioning. What that does is it just lowers the inrush current so you can run your air conditioning off of a generator or battery backup systems. All right, so we're going to attempt the four ton air conditioning. Right now we're sitting at 58% state of charge. My house is drawing 500 watts. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to the air conditioning and well, we're gonna turn it on. All right, we're gonna go to cool. All right, here we go. It kicked on. I don't know if you can hear the air compressor back there. There's the furnace fan. Holy crap, it did it. So we're drawing 3,200 watts, four ton air conditioning. The Anchor Solix F3800 did it, no problem. So if you live in the South, it's super hot out and you lost your power, you can run your air conditioning, no problem, as long as you have a soft start. I don't know what it would do without a soft start. It might do it, it might not. But holy crap, it does that, no problem. All right, air conditioning just shut off. The furnace fan is still on. We're drawing 874 watts. Wow, I'm just completely surprised, wow. And you know what else during that is the fan didn't get screaming loud or anything like that. It stayed roughly where it's at right now. That is amazing. All right, I guess since we're down here, we're gonna go ahead and try the dryer. Here we go, power on. Does the dryer, no problem. So now we're drawing, oh, look at that. 5,642 watts. Nice. And the fans are not loud. You can probably hear the dryer 
more than you can hear the fans on here. All right, let me turn off the dryer. All right, the fans have not changed. All right, my microphone is right here. It is not loud at all. Actually, you can look on the app right here. We're sitting at 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Crazy. All right, next we're gonna do is the stove. All right, we're sitting at 49% state of charge. My house is drawing 481 watts. All right, I guess we'll just go shoot right for the big guns right here. So I'm gonna just do that right on high. And it's doing that, no problem. So we're actually sitting at 3,400 watts. All right, there you go. Does the big ass burner, no problem. 3,400 watts. Shall we try, I don't know. I'm gonna try this back one back here on high. All right, that's 5,800 watts. Oh, no, sorry, I'm doing this front one. <laughs> All right, 5,748 watts. No problem, but that's about as much as we can do. And if we continue with these two burners and my house, we only have uh, 12 minutes left of runtime at 46% state of charge. All right, so you can run a stove or at least the burners, no problem. Maybe we will try convection bake and see what that does, 300. All right, so that is 3,135 watts. Again, if you do it at its current state of charge, 45%, we have roughly 24 minutes of runtime. Anyway, there you go. You can run a stove. All right, there you go. What do you guys think? I personally think it did absolutely fan freaking Fantastic. I mean, it pretty much handled every single thing that I threw at it. Sure, it handles the, you know, the coffee pot, toaster, microwave, you know, all the rest of the stuff, you know, with ease. But honestly, it handled my four ton air conditioning, like no problem whatsoever. And now that I'm thinking back on it, it actually handled the air conditioning, I think a little bit better than it handled the air compressor and the saw at the exact same time. How crazy is that? I don't know, I think it's crazy. Now, of course, half the things I did power in this video, you know, if it's a real power outage, you're obviously not gonna be powering like 90% of the stuff that I powered. It was just more of an example of what it could power. So if we go back to the very beginning of the video and answer that question, can you use the Anchor Solix F3800 as a whole home backup system? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say you can absolutely use it as a whole home battery backup system, which is freaking amazing because I mean, it's really, it's actually pretty small. It's got a small footprint. You know, if you just shove it in the corner and leave it there for, I was gonna say a rainy day, but a day that the power goes out. If you just tuck it away in the corner, you're good to go. Now, of course, if you add solar to the mix, the possibilities are damn near endless. All right, well, that's pretty much all I got. If anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to see those down in the comment section. If anybody's interested in the Anchor Solix F3800, I'm also gonna have links to their Kickstarter page down below. Now, if you're wondering about the price on these, I think the retail price is gonna be around $4,000. However, since it is in a Kickstarter, you can get discounts up to 35%. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure you like that smash button, and I will see you on the next all right, so how this video is probably gonna go is we're gonna take a closer look. I'm gonna go over all the specs. My cat's probably going to help. And then we're gonna get right into the testing. And he found a socket. Where did you find a socket? Is that my 10 millimeter? There's my 10 millimeter. Thank you.